In a previous tutorial we looked at some of the basic tools available within Endorphin. We've created a scene using a single behaviour, but in this tutorial we're going to take that further by creating a scene using multiple behaviours. We'll create a scene with a character leaping from a building and trying to grab onto a railing stretch across in front of him. We'll use multiple behaviours to do this and then constraints to get the character to grab onto the railing. We're going to assume some basic knowledge of the tools available within Endorphin for this tutorial, but you can always refer to the reference manual at any point if you need further help. So let's begin by opening a pre-prepared scene. So we'll go to the File menu, Open Scene, and navigate to the Tutorial 2 Using Multiple Behaviors directory, which is in your installation directory, and from there select Tutorial 2 Using Multiple Behaviors Begin. Now there's something to bear in mind whenever you're working in Endorphin, and that is that when you simulate the scene, the simulation is calculated forward in time, so that any motion on any given frame is dependent on the motion on the previous frame, and that on the motion on frames previous to it. So for example, if you were to create a run, a jump and a roll, going back and changing the run would affect the jump and therefore the roll. All of this means that you should always work with your animation from start to finish, um, signing off each section of it once you're happy with it before you move on. So let's look at our scene now. And we have our standard character standing on a large block which represents a building. And in front of him is this bar which represents a railing. And we want him to leap from the building and grab hold of the railing and swing. Let's simulate now just to see what we get without anything on the timeline. And the character just falls and flops under gravity, falls to the ground, as you'd expect. So let's return to frame zero. And the first thing we want to do is add a jump behavior. So let's go to our character 01's timeline, right click in that timeline, and select create behavior event. We'll move that up to begin at frame zero and then stretch it out so that it finishes somewhere in the region of frame 71. Now these values I'm giving, you can use these if you wish to get the same behaviors I'm going to get, but feel free to experiment with these values, and obviously changing these values will give you different results. So now we want to change the default behavior type from arms windmill to a jump and dive behavior because we want our character to jump from this block. So we'll move to its property view, the behavior property view, and under the name field, select jump and dive. And now if we simulate, we can see the character tries to leap from the building but just flips and lands on the floor. So there are a couple of things we want to change here. If we move in a little and run through this animation, you can see his feet are slipping on that block. And also the strength of his jump, the distance he jumps, is not great enough to reach the bar. So the first thing we're going to change is the strength of that jump. So we'll select the jump and dive behavior in the timeline, move up to its property view. You can see under its variable section there's a strength property and that represents the strength in his leg. So we'll change that from 0.5 to 1 which should make him jump further. And Now if we simulate you can see that though he's not actually traveling much further the jump is more powerful and he flips even more times before he lands. But he's not going any further because his feet are still flip slipping on this block surface. Now Endorphin has a notion of materials for its collision objects. So if I select this block and move up to its property view, you can see that it has a material field. And the setting there is currently default. If I click on default, you can see that there are various other material types I can select. And each of these material types has a set of properties associated with it. Some, for example, are more slippy than others, some are more grippy, some are more bouncy. The default material type is reasonably slippy, which is why our character's feet are slipping on that block. We want to change that to tarmac. And now if we simulate, I'll just pull back a little there, you can see that there's a lot more grip. The character leaps all the way across and actually hits the bar. But currently our character is just leaping in the direction he's facing. He's not really reaching for anything. He's not really reaching for the bar, which is what we want him to do. So we're going to use another behavior to begin immediately after the jump and dive to make him look at and reach for this bar. So let's move down to the character's timeline and left click on the character name to select him. And this time we'll use the button in the main toolbar to create a behavior for that character. Now let's drag that behavior event down 
onto the same track as the jump and dive behaviour and make it begin at frame 71 just where the jump and dive behaviour ends and then we'll drag it so that it ends at about frame 112 now we can move to its property view and in the name field from the drop down select hands reach and look at 2.0 now there are a number of things we want to change about this behavior but the first thing we need to do is tell it what we want the character to reach for and to look at so if we move to its property view we can see that we have a property called look at target which tells the character what we want it to look at so if we click the word select in there and then move into the viewport and select the bar you'll see it turns red to tell us it's selected there's a similar property for the left hand left hand target again click select in the viewport select the bar so this left hand will reach for that bar and scrolling down we have another property for right hand target and again click select and select the bar in the viewport and now if we simulate you can see the character during the simulation looks up and reaches for that bar if I play that you can see that, that transition into the reach is actually quite snappy his arms reach up pretty quickly we want to make that reach just a little bit more leisurely so to do that again select the hands reach and look at behavior and move over to its property view and you can see that there's a property under left hand target called blend and this represents the amount of time in seconds it takes for the arms to reach up to blend into that action of reaching up for the bar we're going to change that from 0 to 0 0.2 so it should now take his left hand 0 0.2 seconds to begin to reach for that bar there's a similar property under right hand target blend we'll set that also to 0 0.2 and we'll set